Welcome to Brandstorm, the podcast that talks to the people behind America's brands. I'm Dan Trzinski, president of Platypus Advertising and Design. And I'm Nancy Christopher, PR director at Platypus. When you live in Wisconsin, green and gold runs through your veins. We live and breathe the Green Bay Packers. I mean, Dan, if I were to ask you what's your greatest Packers memory, what comes to mind? I know. I, I, I had to think long and hard about it. But I think the, I, I don't know if it was Sunday night or Monday night football, but when the, the game Brett Favre had after his father died oh, was yeah. just, yeah. I mean, makes the hair on your arm stand up just talking about it now even. So uh, that was amazing. My guess is our guest today would remember that night extremely well. Uh, he's created a lot of those great Packers moments and is keeping those memories alive as the founder of the Player Alumni Resources. Please welcome Super Bowl 31 champion and Packers Hall of Famer, Chris Jackie. Boy, it's a treat and an honor to have you with us, Chris. Oh, the honor's all mine. I really appreciate you guys having me on, and I, I look forward to a little discussion. And I do remember that night. Um, you know, unfortunately, I wasn't part you of that You weren't part night. of that game, right? Yeah, that I was, was after not. your era. I, I, was a, I, I had already turned into a fan at that point, but right. I, I, remember the, <laughs> I remember the game really well. Not that I wasn't a fan before. Right. Um, but yeah, that, that game, like you, you mentioned, I, had, I was part of, you know, physically a part of a lot of great memories. Watching that game on Monday night with Brett after his father passed away. If you didn't get chills up your back or down your spine, you know, you're not human. So. No, okay. <laughs> what's, your, what's your favorite Packer memory? Oh, you know, I get that question a lot. You know, when you first come in the league, I can still remember the first field goal I made. You know, I always talk about that 1989 season where we were called the Cardiac Pack. I had several game <laughs> winners. You know, the one down in Tampa, you know, is up there. But I had a Monday night game that wasn't too bad either. It was a game Robert Brooks went down and Don Beebe stepped up. Defense played well against the 49ers. And we went into overtime and had a long field goal to win too. the game in overtime. So that was pretty exciting, you know, but it, it's real difficult you know being you know part of such a transformation with the Packers you know from those not so good seasons we had in 90 and 91 we don't like to you know people don't realize that we weren't years. always we weren't always you know where we are today we, we did have a few bad seasons and you know in the 80s we had pr pretty bad decades so just being a part of all that it was it's just a lot of fun to look back on and talk about my daughter's a huge Packer fan and she's 35 years old. she's born in 1982 so she doesn't really remember the 80s ever you know and, right. and, 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 or the Packers really ever being bad <laughs> right and wow. I'm like you have no idea the dues that we paid from the 70s and 80s <laughs> we we really did you know, well, well, you know i mentioned that cardiac pack season in 89 we went 10 and 6 just missing the playoffs and, right you know coming back we had every you know we had don Mikowski and sterling sharp and brian noble and all those guys and i thought you know hey we'll be making the playoffs you know for a few years ago all these guys were fairly young right but the next two seasons were four and twelve right <laughs> <laughs> so i was like oh Wow. But then, you know, once they brought in those new guys, the new coaching staff and the things that Bob Harlan did behind the scenes, you know, created that team we still see today, in my, in my opinion. Right. Well, not to get off the subject, but what exactly have you been doing since you were with the NFL? Uh, let's see. I, I retired in 2000 and I really took two years off, you know, just to get to know my kids again. I don't think people realize how much football takes away from being able to be a father or a family man or, or what have you. But while I was still playing, I had gotten my licensing for to be a financial planner. So once once I took that two year hiatus off, I started doing some financial planning for about 10 years. And if you have any recollection of those early 2000s, everything that went on, 9-11, right. you know, Bernie Madoff, Tough time, you yes. know, financial crisis it was real it was it was really difficult to be a fledgling uh, financial planner getting into this business and then when I went into the Packer Hall of Fame in 2013 I actually got started to get asked to do a lot of fundraisers or golf outings or hey will you come speak at our corporate event you know, my wife is a, is a business consultant and you know at our conversation she says you know you could do this and have a lot more fun doing this and doing financial planning Absolutely. and that's when the that, and that's when the idea of, of creating player alumni resources came to mind and it was intended just to be for me but as I was talking to some of the other guys that I played with that I have you know name recognition and I already knew we're doing these types of things like a Gilbert Brown or a William Henderson you know Frank Winters those types of guys and they weren't really doing anything as far as a platform on, on the internet like a website or anything it was kind of who they knew word of mouth type of stuff so I kind of explained the idea I had and I go hey I'll put your likeness up there on the website you tell me what you like to do do you like the golf do you like the fish do you like to speak and if people contact me and they would love to if they would want you to you know come to their event I'll help you set that up 
So that's kind of where I'm at today. Um, Player Alumni Resources, we've been doing it since 2013. And it's really just a way to say, keep these old guys, you know, like your daughter. You know, <laughs> she doesn't remember a lot of the older guys, you know, right. the Frank Winters and the William Hendersons or the Chris Jackies. And it's right on the website. It's a way to keep the alumni connected to the greatest fans in sports. So who are some of the other members of your team? You mentioned a few. Sure. You know, I tried to go back as far as I could. Um, you know, I have Jerry Kramer on there, Mar Fleming, uh, Lynn Dickey from that that era, Gary Ellerson, and then a lot of the guys that I played with. You know, I mentioned like Frank Winters or William Henderson or George Kuntz. Um, I even have a few that are the millennials would recognize, um, an Amon Green or a Kabir. And don't ask me to pronounce his last name because I'll mess it up. Yeah, I, I, always, exactly. I just call him I just call him KGB. Right. Uh, <laughs> Basha so, Bila Mila or something yeah, like that, it, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. So That's it's, close. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> that is. That was very close. So it's primarily the guys I played with because obviously I had those relationships already. But I'm always looking to expand, you know, as these younger guys, as they get older and they retire and they, they want to be a part of this. And you know, I don't do any kind of exclusivity or anything like that. I just say, hey, I'll put you out there. And if you like to do these types of things and if something comes your way, I'll, I'll feed it to you. So are you uh, connected only to former Packers and Wisconsin sports celebrities or can you can make connections to other sports celebrities just by virtue of knowing people in the business? Um, you know, that's a great question. It, it, it's on the radar. I've, I've been doing this for what is it now? 2018. I've been doing this for five years. And when I started Putting this idea, obviously you get a lot of brainstorming, a lot of wild ideas in your mind. And maybe if this works with the Green Bay Packers alumni, could this work with the Denver Broncos alumni say, or the Cowboys? Say, don't yeah, say the Bears. I, I'm not going to say the Bears. <laughs> I would never help those guys. <clears throat> so the idea is there um, to, to try and expand or quote unquote franchise it. But I haven't taken that step yet. So what types of promotions, events, appearances do you put together? Uh, we've done them all, um, anywhere from a church fundraiser to speaking in front of 500 people at a corporate event. Um, a lot of corporations do employee training or things like that, and that's where I really get my wife's company involved. She's a business consultant um, here in Green Bay as well, um, and she helps. In, and if you've ever listened to a celebrity or a football player speak, it's usually the same stuff. You know, I this is when I played. These are the things that I accomplished. I wish I was still playing because of the money they're making today, that type of stuff. <laughs> um, but what we really try and do is I'll sit down with, if let's say, I don't know why Harley Davidson just popped in my mind. I think it's because they've been in the news so much. But let's say a Harley Davidson came to us and say, hey, we really want you to talk about transformation. So I will try and look at the guys and say, hey, do they have a story that we relate to what the message is the people at Harley Davidson want to get across to their employees or their C-suite people? So we don't try and just send guys out, although we will do that if they just want someone to show up and you know speak for a few minutes and sign autographs and kiss babies. But I'd rather send someone out to a corporation and the message from the alumni <clears throat> is pertinent to what the message is the corporation is trying to get across. And that's where I work with my wife and her firm, and we try and create that story based on what the alumni tells us. So it's a little bit different. So do you train the players for those types of events? Um, or, train or, or, or is it trying to just take knowing their real life experiences and matching those up? We try and match those up. I guess that's the best way to say it. Like George Koontz, we, I work with him a lot because he's he lives here in Wisconsin, and there's not a lot of guys that here that live here in Wisconsin. You know, after their playing days, but he has a great story about perseverance, where he grew up in a sh this little shack house with a dirt road going to it, to winning a Super Bowl and getting his PhD. You know, after he was done playing, so he has a great story about perseverance. Um, I go out and talk a lot about transformation. We kind of talked about that with the Green Bay Packers going from a not so good team to a Super Bowl caliber team every year. You know, what behind the scenes did that take to get to that level with the Packers? And a lot of corporations can relate to that if, if it's talked to in the correct way. So in your opinion, what does it take? I mean, because I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you want me to give you my whole spiel? No, 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 no. Just give us the Reader's Digest version. Reader's Digest. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just, you know, I mentioned Bob Harlan. Bob, Bob Harlan, the first thing he did was bring in Ron Wolf. And you just think about, you know, the domino effects, you know, Ron Wolf, then he brings in the coaching staff. And then the coaching staff 
really changes the entire the entire picture of the way the team looked. Um, in fact, there were only of that on that winning Super Bowl team in 1997. There were only two people that were held over from the Lindy Infante era, and that was myself and Leroy Butler. So what the coaching staff did is they changed the training room, the the weight room. Everything was changed behind the scenes. They brought in players that wanted to be here, like a Reggie White. You know, he, sure. Reggie White becomes an ambassador to get other people to come here. So it was putting the right people in place, kind of like a, what a corporation does. You got to have good good leadership to be able to lead. And that's essentially, in a nutshell, a 30-minute presentation in about a minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Do you market your team, or do companies typically come to you? Uh, they typically come to me. I, the only marketing, quote-unquote, I do is through social media. And you know, I've mentioned my wife, and I always hate to say, keep saying my wife. Her name is Terry. You know, through, through her, through her yes, contacts. Terry will appreciate that. Yeah. Being a business consultant here in Wisconsin, she was, is loaded for bear as far as contacts. She's worked with most CEOs here in Wisconsin. And when I started Player Alumni Resources, I just sent out emails to anybody I knew or, or she knew, or I even Googled Packers um, sponsors like a Festival Foods, Mark Skogan, or Dan Aarons at the Aarons Company and go, hey, I, I started this company. I'd love to get your feedback. Do you have time for a 30-minute coffee? So I really don't do advertising other than social media. So yeah, people I've seen you find on LinkedIn. Me. That's, yeah. how, that's how I found yeah. you and connected. So you, you do a good exactly. job. I try to have a little fun. Right, right. <laughs> what benefits have you seen have happened for from companies that have associated with players well we got we, as far as the speaking we we always get great feedback um if you've ever i've and i personally have never been an employee of a corporation but i can imagine some of those meetings that last an entire day or an entire weekend get quite dry or quite boring so if you can bring in a you know, someone with a little bit of name recognition a former green bay packer and they can tell a story and the audience as an audience if they don't even realize they're being talked to the story that the alumni is telling is actually something they're, they're going to take home and take away from that weekend. We've gotten a lot, a lot of good feedback on the stories that we tell there. Um, doing golf outings, you know, we're, we help raise awareness. You know, when I do a golf outing with someone, someone I always post their cause on my social media, so that helps them with the awareness. And I help them with ways to raise money too while we're there because they're going to pay an alumni to come there. I don't want them to spend money and not make money. So I, I've done enough golf outings. I go, hey, here's what's worked in the past. Here's what I recommend. If you're going to spend X amount of dollars, let's try and make that money back. Can I ask you what a touch of celebrity costs? <laughs> I always say, what's your budget? <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it varies. You know, um, you know, like a Jerry Kramer, I mean, God bless him. He finally went into the, into the Professional Football I Hall know. of Fame. Wasn't that and, fabulous? <clears throat> what a that great is, speech, too. It really was. So, you know, he commands a little bit more than, say, you know, some of the guys like a George Coons that are down. So it really depends on the alumni that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. And I never try and give away what they're going to what they're going to charge. Um, I always ask and I was being kind of funny about what's your budget, because based on the budget of the company or a charity or a golf outing, I'll say, here's five or six guys that fit within your budget. And, and I then imagine I, there's then some you, the, there's some travel expenses some with some of them as well that yeah and we include all, we, yep. we we always address all that just to make sure there's you know nothing everything's up front that way there's no scary stuff at the end right <laughs> <laughs> so here's the big question what's the best way to connect with you oh the best way to connect with me is through the website at, at playeralumniresources.com i actually have my personal cell phone on there um i have my email on there and i always try and respond within 24 or 48 hours depending on if it's a weekend and it's sunny outside in wisconsin but that's the easiest way you can follow me on facebook or i even got into twitter here lately and i still don't know what i'm doing there um <laughs> linkedin's a great way I, i'm on linkedin quite a bit um so all the standard social media but the best way is to go to the website because you can look at some of the things that we do do offer whether it's golfing or corporate speaking um i have fishing on there you know when i started player alumni resources i tried to think of things that you know, Wisconsin people love and it was Packers and it was hunting and it was fishing and it was golfing and I've never shot a gun in my life. So I chose fishing. Right. Um, so that's the easiest way. That way you can look at the website and get a feel for it and look at, you know, some of the alumni that are on there that we haven't mentioned here today. And, and we go from there. I think it's a great idea. I know there's a lot of companies out there that 
they have the idea because I've been in those meetings where they have the idea. Right. It's like you know, how, how do you get you know to this player, or that player, uh, right. and, and you know, well, who's their agent? And where do you go? And the and generally the sports agent you know that's out there isn't really interested in just the local business. I mean, they're looking for the big national deal or something like right. that. So yep. uh, I think this is a great idea to have a resource or a clearinghouse to um, come to you and say, hey, I'd like to have so and so at this event. And uh, you either can either connect with them or you can't. Well, and, yeah. great, and great stories to tell, Chris, because yeah. you were part of an amazing time in Packers history. And, well, and we are so glad to have you with us. Well, thank you. I, I really enjoyed it. You know, a lot of guys have great stories. I mentioned George Kuntz's story. Obviously, Jerry Kramer has an excellent story. No it took kidding. him, what, 40 years to finally get exactly. in to where he, he deserves. So a lot these guys have a lot of great stories that, you know, you wouldn't realize they have because they're just people, too. You know, it's it, it's a funny saying, but we really are. You know, we have all the same ups and downs as everyone else out there, and if we can apply it to a message that can get across to three, four hundred people in the audience at at a corporation, you know, that's what we try and do. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for being our guest today. Anytime. I loved it. All right, and good luck to you. Thank you. You too. If you like what you've heard today, please don't forget to share, review, and subscribe to Brandstorm. This is Dan Drzinski along with Nancy Christopher at Platypus Advertising and Design, an awesome company that creates perceptions that influence choice for a variety of regional, national, and even global brands on a daily basis. We hope you'll join us next week for another episode of Brandstorm.